While the men and women are kept separate in wrestling, it doesn't mean there aren't natural counterparts within each of those divisions. Yes, on occasion male and female superstars will have striking similarities to their counterparts. But what are the biggest examples of this? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. And where better to start than with one of the most obvious incidences of this, and that's CM Punk and AJ Lee. And it's not just because Phil Brooks and April Mendez are married in real life that makes them counterparts of one another. It's also the way they present their wrestling characters to the world. Yes, while CM Punk has long been known for being a rebel, someone willing to push back against authority, AJ Lee is no slouch in this area either. After all, it was her who was notably vocal both on social media and on television about the state of the women's division in WWE prior to the calling up of the Four Horsewomen. And let's not forget about her own pipe bomb she cut against the likes of the Bella Twins at one point, something which echoed her husband's own very public rant a couple of years prior. So intertwined were the two on a character basis, in fact, that when Punk joined AEW in 2021, it felt like only a matter of time until AJ did the same and gave a much-needed boost to their women's division in her own anti-authority way. Sadly, though, it's highly unlikely that will ever happen now, given the fact that the former world champion has been fired from the Jacksonville promotion after getting into another backstage fight with Jack Perry. But that doesn't mean the married couple can't still be seen together on scripted shows like the Stars drama Heels. And it doesn't mean they'll never hit the ring once more in the future, perhaps even as a duo. If they do, though, it'll really have to be WWE at this point, and that means they'll no doubt have to contend with two other male-female counterparts currently under contract with that promotion, John Cena and Babyface Bayley. Of course, when we make this comparison, we're talking about Bayley specifically as a babyface, not in the current heel role she portrays. No, while Pamela Martinez is awesome no matter what alignment she has on screen, it was when she was a fan favorite that the comparisons to Big Match John felt the most apt. After all, this was when she was able to get so over with young kids that she even had her own super fan named Izzy. And given the state of WWE's booking at the time and their difficulty in creating new babyface stars, this made what Bayley was doing all the more impressive. Seriously. Had the company played their cards right here, then they could have had a true Cena-level megastar for the women's division, one who could have played the same role as he did over in the men's division in being the all-American superhero capable of going to all the Make-A-Wish events and charity gatherings. Sadly though, as we now know, after a botched initial run on the main roster, Bayley would be forced to turn heel in order to recover. But that doesn't mean she can't return to the side of the good guys again in the future and there once more pick up her role as John Cena's female counterpart. Hell, at this rate, such a thing might be needed more than ever, because with Big Match John in semi-retirement already, we're not sure how many matches he has left in him. The only reason we got so much of him in the summer of 2023, in fact, was because there was a Screen Actors Guild strike, and that's not something which is going to take place every year. But then wrestlers getting older and moving on to new things is nothing new in the industry, it doesn't matter who it is, they're all going to age out at some point. And while this was a particularly difficult pill for fans to swallow when the time came for Stone Cold Steve Austin to hang up his boots, that pain was softened when his female counterpart eventually arose in the form of Becky Lynch. That's right, while she may have started off her run in WWE with a pretty bad Irish dancing gimmick, by the time the summer of 2018 came around, Rebecca Quinn was ready to morph into her final form. And that form, as it happened, was an anti-hero rebel who fought back against everyone and everything in front of her. One who, despite initially being booked to be a heel, got so over with fans that she ended up in the main event of WrestleMania as the all-conquering babyface the following year. Remind you of anyone? It should, because around two decades prior to this, the same thing was happening over in the men's division of WWF when Steve Austin went from being the ultimate heel to the perennial anti-hero face of the era after live crowds started getting behind him in a major way. And the reason he was so popular was because his I-don't-care-who-I-piss-off attitude was so cool to people in the late 90s, they couldn't help but cheer him on. Of course, while it might have been a whole new era by the time 2018 came around, that didn't mean fans weren't still into cool rebels who dressed in black and thumbed their nose at authority. They just didn't have anyone else like Stone Cold there at the time. That was until the man came around and changed all this, however. With her picking up the mantle so well at this point, Austin would even share a beer with her in the ring on an episode of Raw in 2020. But now the question remains, will Becky Lynch be able to keep up her role as top star in the division for much longer? Or will she ultimately slide into early retirement much the same way as Austin did in 2003? 
And that's something we don't have the answer to yet. But one thing is for sure, if she does leave, then there will be another member of the Four Horsewomen there to pick up the slack. One who also has a male counterpart, and that's Charlotte Flair and her other half, Rick. That's right, not only are the pair father and daughter, but the comparisons between the Nature Boy and the Queen are striking in many other ways. After all, it's not like all parent-child duos share the same level of skill as they do. Hell, even in the Flair family this isn't the case. Need we remind you about David Flair? But while David really never had the natural aptitude for the ring in the same way his father did, the same couldn't be said for Charlotte, because when she first hit the squared circle during the early 2010s, it quickly became apparent that she was going to be the closest thing we had to a modern-day Slick Rick. Why was that? Well, like her dad, Charlotte was able to take to the whole thing like a duck to water and work excellent matches in her sleep. Yes, you've heard the old joke that Ric Flair could have a five-star match with a broom. Well, his daughter can do the same at this point, and if you need any evidence of that, you only have to look to the list of classics she's had against the likes of Asuka, Becky Lynch, and Rhea Ripley over the years. But it's not just the shared in-ring quality which makes Rick and Charlotte Flair natural counterparts. No, it's also the similarities in their characters. That's right, every time either of them come through the curtain, they're all too aware that they're superior to everyone else in every way and this lends them a cocky air, which makes for a natural heeldom. So well executed is this on the Queen's part, in fact, she's had many fans legitimately turn on her at points, as they find it difficult to separate the character from the woman. And while it's hard to get people to boo Ric Flair nowadays, back in the day, he also managed to draw legitimate hatred wherever he went. The only question we have now, then, is will we ever see the pair reunited on screen? It may seem like a ridiculous idea at first glance for Charlotte Flair to leave WWE, but with both her father and her husband Andrade El Idolo now working for the competition, there's every possibility she could end up being All Elite herself in the future. And if she does make this jump, it would open up the forbidden door for her and finally allow her to mix it up with members of the highly underrated Impact Women's Division. Of course, one of the first challenges for her we'd have on our list at this point would be a woman who also has a notable male counterpart. Who are we talking about here? Why, Jordan Grace and Scott Steiner, of course. Yes, if you're not a regular Impact viewer, then you're missing out on arguably the best women's division in wrestling. And that's because this division includes high-level acts such as Mickie James, Deanna Perrazzo, and the female powerhouse, Jordan Grace. What makes Grace in particular so special? Well, like we said a moment ago, she's a complete powerhouse, someone so jacked with muscle that she'd make 90s China blush. And this makes her the perfect counterpoint for another performer who still occasionally appears in TNA, and that's Scott Steiner. Because, as we all know, he's more muscle than man. That's right, each of these performers have been able to use their incredible physiques to rise all the way to the top. Hell, both have even been multiple-time world champions. And with Grace still only being 27 years old, there's every chance she'll add even more gold to her trophy cabinet before all is said and done. The pair even teamed up briefly at Impact Wrestling's 2019 Unbreakable Pay-Per-View, when alongside Petey Williams, they defeated Dickie Meyer, Gentleman Jervis, and Ryan Taylor. Two male-female counterparts who are unlikely to be teaming up, though, will be our next two subjects, and that's Jade Cargill and Goldberg. Why is this? Well, while Jade may have started her career in AEW, she's since made the jump over to WWE, the very same place where Goldberg appears to have finished up with for good. Not that the Florida native needs the rub from the former WCW world champion at this point, though, because she's already done more than enough to establish herself as a future player in the industry. And the way she's done this, funnily enough, is by doing exactly what Bill did back in the 90s, by going on a lengthy undefeated streak. Yes, two and a half decades after Goldberg won 173-0, Jade was able to win her debut bout on Dynamite as part of a tag team with Shaquille O'Neal, and from there, Mo threw everyone in her path until she was 60-0. Sure, this may not seem as impressive on the face of things, but keep in mind that unlike WCW, AEW doesn't run house shows, and so each of these victories was either on TV or on an episode of Dark or Dark Elevation. And it was during this run that she'd even become the inaugural TBS champion, a title she went on to hold for 508 days before dropping it to Chris Statlander at May 2023's Double or Nothing pay-per-view. And this only makes her even more of a counterpart to Bill Goldberg, as during the course of his own undefeated streak, he'd also win gold in the form of both the United States title and the WCW World title. We suppose it's just a case of waiting to see if Jade is also able to add a world title to her list of accomplishments before all is said and done then, 
something we'd expect to happen sooner rather than later, because based on what we've seen so far, Triple H seems to be all in on pushing her to the moon. And that means it's inevitable that she'll at some point be asked to get in the ring with a woman who, by this point, has become something of a gatekeeper for the division in New York, much the same way as up until recently her male counterpart served the same purpose over in the men's division. Who are we talking about this time? Who else but Natalia and Dolph Ziggler? Yes, in Natalia and Dolph Ziggler, you have two of the best and arguably most underutilized talents of their generation. Seriously, either of these could have been the face of their respective divisions while they were at their peaks. The only thing which stopped them from being so, in fact, was that there were just others at the time who were better suited for the role. But that doesn't mean their careers have been failures. No, far from it, as both the Canadian and the Ohio native have been able to carve out a nice role for themselves serving the same purpose Sean Waltman did during the 90s, and that's being the measuring stick of who's good enough to get a spot on TV. That's right, whenever a new up-and-coming prospect arrives on Raw or SmackDown, one of their first opponents is usually Natalya or Dolph. And if they're good enough to hang with them, then they're good enough to go on a level above, perhaps even all the way to the main event scene. But this shouldn't suggest that both Natty and the show-off haven't at times reached such a level themselves. Hell, both have used their excellent in-ring skills to win world titles at points. That said, their long-term role has always been more in the mid-card, where they can bump around others and make them look like a million dollars in the process. Sure, it might seem like a thankless task, and in many ways it is, but that doesn't mean it hasn't earned them a huge amount of respect amongst their peers. So respected has it made them, in fact, that even after being released from his WWE contract in September of 2023, 43-year-old Dolph Ziggler is still in high enough demand that many see it as only a matter of time before he joins his brother Ryan Nemeth in AEW. And if he does that, we may even get to witness him lock horns with another figure who has a very popular and well-known counterpart, two people who go by the names of Jeff Hardy and Lita. Now, we know the obvious comparison here might seem like Matt Hardy and Lita, given that they've been so closely interlinked over the years and were at one point even a romantic item. But for our money, it's actually Jeff who serves as a better counterpart to the Fort Lauderdale native, as well Matt was always the creative genius of Team Extreme, both his brother and his former girlfriend shared much more of a physical daredevil streak. And that's not to say the older Hardy didn't have this too, of course, it's just that the other two members of the stable were always better known than he was for their crazy stunts. Stunts which managed to get them so massively over with alternative kids in both the late 90s and early 2000s. Hell, it's their very willingness to put their bodies on the line which made them such big-time icons that they're still considered to be inspirations for many men and women entering into the industry today. That's right, you probably wouldn't have people like a Darby Allin or a Matt and Nick Jackson were it not for the exploits of the charismatic Enigma as both a tag team and solo superstar at the turn of the millennium and beyond. And were it not for Lita's time in the spotlight, you might never have seen folks such as AJ Lee, Bailey, or Mercedes Monet lace up their own boots once they came of age. Sure, you could argue each set a dangerous precedent with their wild stunts back in the day, with these being stunts which current generation stars are still trying to outdo to increasingly scary degrees. But then wrestling has always had an element of people pushing their physicality to the absolute limit anyway, and were it not for Jeff Hardy and Lita, we might still be 10 years behind where we should be as they push things so very far during their heyday. In fact, even to this day, they're still doing just that, with Jeff helping to get the younger generation over on AEW, all while Lita periodically returns to WWE to have a dream match against an opponent like a Becky Lynch or a Bayley. Will this mean she ever gets a chance to lock horns with one of our next subjects? Who knows? Anything's possible when we're talking about real-life superheroes, such as Nikki A.S.H. and her male counterpart, The Hurricane. Yes, it's time to talk about WWE's two resident crime fighters, the first of whom came around in the early 2000s when, after the creative debacle that was the invasion, Sugar Shane Helms transformed himself into a modern-day caped crusader named The Hurricane. And once he did this, he instantly became one of the most popular figures on the roster, as fans everywhere fell more and more in love with his comic book antics each and every week. It didn't matter if he was gaining sidekicks in the form of Rosie, Mighty Molly, and Super Stacy, or if he was getting into a feud with the great one himself, The Rock. The Hurricane became a key fixture of Monday nights for a while back, when the company was trying to move on from the Attitude Era. That said, he wouldn't be the only superhero the company ever had on the roster. And that's because almost two decades later in 2021, Nikki Cross decided to drop the more psychotic elements of her character as she became almost a superhero. No, you didn't mishear us. We said almost a superhero. 
Why this and not a full-blown crime fighter? Well, someone on the WWE creative team thought it was a good idea to have her not quite be good enough for the role. Maybe the idea was that if she was flawed, then it would make her easier to relate to. It's hard to tell what goes on in the mind of Vince McMahon. Whatever the reason though, the end result was the same, and this was that Nikki donned the mask and cape for the next year or so and did everything she could to topple her enemies, with this working out so well for her that she'd even briefly become Raw Women's Champion at one point. Of course, since Triple H took over control of Creative, the Scotswoman has reverted back to a version of her older gimmick, albeit this time a version who now seems to find herself entering a strange trance anytime she appears in front of a live crowd. But then, strangeness has always been a part of the playbook for the New York-based promotion, particularly back during the days of the new generation and attitude eras, as that's when our next two male-female counterparts worked for the company, Luna Vachon and Gangrel. What makes these two so similar? Well, while Luna may not have been playing a vampire during her first run with WWF in the mid-90s, and then again in the late 90s, she may as well have been, as her gothic horror character was about as close as could be to being the undead without actually having fangs and a cape. After all, her whole thing during her initial time in the WWF when she was paired up with the likes of Bam Bam Bigelow was to scare kids in the audience as much as possible. And when she returned at the dawn of the Attitude Era to serve as the manager for Gold Dust a few years later, she was just as fearsome. But by that point, she wasn't the only person on the roster who was portraying themselves in such a way, as elsewhere on the card, Gangrel was starting to get over on account of his awesome theme song and his brood made up of Edge and Christian. Hell, so similar were they that the pair would shortly team up together on screen in 1999 as wrestler and manager. And this was because by this point, the two had married in real life. And once both had been released by the company, they continued to pop up in various promotions around the world for cameo appearances over the years which followed their peaks. And whenever they did this, of course, they were still playing the same characters, the ones which served as such excellent counterpoints for one another back in the day.